I'll try the uh, walking around thing too. Um, I don't have any fancy technology or data or anything to talk about today. We're just going to talk about making a good old fashioned map um, here in Acadia National Park. Um, if you've been to any American national parks, you're probably familiar with the Unigrid brochure system. So when you go through the entry gate and you pay your fee, you get a beautifully designed Unigrid brochure with interpretive information, wonderfully designed maps on the backside, designed um, by the cartographers at Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. Um, and these are great publications. Um, I don't know if any of you have also heard of inflation, um, but these have also gotten very expensive um, for park service units to print. Um, Acadia is a very popular park. Um, and so the park was looking for a uh, more cost effective and also more flexible format to get across some geographic information that they specifically had problems with users and wayfinding. Um, and that's where this project comes in. I don't know if you can see this. This is all the information that I was given um, to start this project. So this is three separate sites. It's the Hulls Cove Visitor Center Complex, the Sur de Mont Nature Center, and then the Jordan Pond um, House, which are three extremely popular sites on the uh, eastern side of Mount Desert Island. Um, these maps are not OSM. I think they might have come from Bing. Not sure exactly. Um, but not a ton of good information, but sometimes that's the best place to start with a mapping project, is to start with as little as possible. Um, there's a couple of uh, wayfinding challenges in all these places. So at Hulls Cove, specifically, um, the parking lot and the entrance is 53 stairs below the actual building. Um, and the accessible parking lot is on a completely different road on the backside um, of the building. Um, and so as you can assume, there was lots of issues getting people who had accessibility problems up to the building. Um, at Sur de Mont, there's a uh, nature center, but also a series of um, really detailed uh, trails that go into kind of like a botanic garden area. Um, and so the intent here was to not just show access to those, but show how those connect to the greater trail system in Acadia. One of the other uh, unique parts about Acadia is that they have a carriage road system, um, which is closed to vehicular traffic, but open to um, biking and walking. But it's a different type of trail experience than what you would get on a traditional walking trail. Um, and then Jordan Pond is extremely popular. It's a, beautiful, it's a beautiful old house. There's a restaurant there. There's outdoor seating. There's a rooftop deck. Um, there's a wonderful lake. There's a boat launch. Um, and they need three parking lots to accommodate all of those things. But only one of those parking lots is adjacent to the building. And the other two are on multiple other roads. And you need to be able to get access to the building. So those are the wayfinding challenges for these three sites. Um, and so then we start going through kind of our map making process. Where do we get data? How are we going to display this? Um, and, and what's the process here? Um, so there's, there's always multiple ways to solve different pr these problems. Um, you know, the first one is to think, well, it's the Park Service. They probably have great data. And they do have OK data. Um, but it was still going to require me to fill in a lot of gaps to be able to kind of create the, the product that I was looking to create. And at the end of the day, the only um, value that I was creating was the print map itself. Um, same thing, these are large scale, which I always get that mixed up, large scale, small scale. It doesn't matter because whoever you talk to doesn't know the difference either. Um, so I could just draw these locations in Illustrator or Inkscape um, myself uh, to get ready for print. Um, but same thing, it's like the only, the only value that I would be creating is for the print users in the park. So the next option is, of course, well, sorry, I had a funny meme in here and I botched it. <laughs> it's like, at, at some point, a landscape architect has drawn um, all of these things, passed on to a civil engineer. These sites have been drawn multiple times, um, recorded in some database, recorded in AutoCAD at some point, and then when it comes to the creation of the map, it's like, eh, you know, the best I can do is these lines and boxes. Um, and the OSM data here wasn't bad. So I did not have this talk in mind when I uh, started um, this project. So I don't have good before and after screenshots. Um, but so here's the Jordan Pond House. You know, the building is there. Some of the parking is in there. Um, the trail network is in there. I mean, all the pieces are in there that you would need. Um, but it's not quite also at the fidelity that I would want to put on a NPS publication. Um, since I don't have before graphics for all the other ones, this is kind of like one of those cooking shows where, you know, they prep everything and then 
they cut the scene and then they have a nice beautiful baked dish. Um, so here's what we ended up with after many, many hours of, of editing this Jordan Pond area. Um, just more detail in the parking areas, more detail in land cover, more detail um, in the, the restaurant area, separating the building into its two halves, adding in the rooftop deck um, as separate geometries. Um, something else I like to do, probably very superfluous, is to add parking spaces. Um, I use Gridify as a plugin um, in JOSM for that. Everything else is just done in plain Jane. ID editor. Um, the other sites here, here's Hulse Cove with the um, staircase going up. The accessible parking with all of the, um, each individual parking space is also assigned uh, whether it's accessible parking or not. Um, the bus stop, the information center that's down below, separating staff parking from visitor parking, um, all sorts of different wayfinding things that everybody could find helpful, not just people using the maps. Um, if you're using organic maps or OSM and or any of the other OSM based navigation uh, apps. And then finally, Sir DeMont with the uh, nature trails um, and then the uh, closed down center down at the bottom. Um, so these look fine in OSM Cardo, um, but also not gonna help me for a print publication. Um, so my next step here is just gonna export these. And so just using the regular export function on openstreetmap.org, um, these, once again, large scale, not too big. Um, they're going to be able to export as an OSM file. If your site is too big, use the overpass to be able to get the exact same information. Download the OSM file, and then we're going to just drag and drop into our best friend, QGIS. Um, nothing special here. Ignore my projection issues when I took the screenshots for this uh, presentation. Um, I'll go through kind of the, the process here of just very quickly like cleaning this up and getting it ready to go into Illustrator. Um, as you can, well, maybe you can see, maybe you can't. There's a couple of uh, unclosed polygons here, and those are our road areas. Um, the highway area tag is not widely supported. Um, it is used, uh, especially in Germany, um, but it is something I like to use to give actual geometry to pavement areas. Um, it's not rendered in OSM Cardo. Um, but it is something that I like to use. And those are those areas that are not being brought in here. Um, so we'll click quickly select those, um, just using the selection tool, use a quick plugin, lines to polygons. It's not even a plugin anymore. It's just part of the base processing. Another ugly color here of um, yellow. So now I have my polygons created. And now the final thing I want to do, or not the final thing, next to final thing, is I want to get rid of all the black lines. Um, so the, there's, there's distinction here. So you've got the outlines for the polygons, then you've got the polygon fill. Looks fine. Here it is um, as it is. But once you get it into your vector software, then it becomes difficult to remove each individual black outline. And so it's just easier to get rid of all of them in GIS. Um, so I will just symbolize all my polygons with no outline. Um, so I set my stroke width to no line. And then finally, what I want to do is lines have gone away from the strokes, and now I want to symbolize everything by just other tags. I don't care what the tags are. Um, all I want is that each piece of geometry um, is separated somehow. So I have this nice psychedelic color palette here where everything is separated. And the intent here is that in Illustrator or Inkscape, whatever your preferred vector graphics software is going to be, now I can easily separate these features and apply whatever styling I want to. Um, so we'll put it back in the magic oven. Oh, sorry. And now my export here is um, just PDF. I haven't set up a print composer. I'm not setting a scale. I'm not doing anything fancy other than saying this is a 300 DPI um, geospatially referenced PDF. And then I will drop that PDF directly into Illustrator or to Inkscape. Um, and then this is, ends up being what the kind of the final product is here. So something simple, something that fits the um, style from the existing maps, um, because those needed to be slightly modified to, to fit these pieces too. And then I'm able to add minor details that are not appropriate to be adding probably into OSM, like the roof structure for places or drop shadows. Um, <laughs> uh, little dormer windows on the top of the, um, of the nature center um, at Jordan Pond, all the little umbrellas. So nobody yelled at me. I did not add all the little umbrellas into OSM. Um, but they are added into my, uh, into my final graphic. Same thing with um, pedestrian uh, crosswalks. Um, and 
here's how the final layout goes. We actually spent more time discussing the layout than actually creating any of the maps and still ended up someplace that I'm not super happy with, but this is how it works. Um, to get it all on a single page, to be able to have multiple scales of the regional maps, the um, island of the entire park, um, different pieces, and then having the, the subsets um, baked in. And that is a process of end-to-end -end making just a traditional print map um, with OSM. Okay, I guess I finished early. I, I can take a question if anybody has one. No, this will actually be used. So this will be printed for, so if you, theoretically, if you go to Acadia National Park this summer um, and go into a visitor center, this will be a tear off map that they'll use to direct you to these specific places. Yep. That is not OSM, so that was, I did edit it for this project, um, but I didn't add OSM data to it. So like with the data attribution for OSMs in the bottom corner just specifies that the site, the enlarged site maps utilize OSM. Um, so the only thing that was done to the uh, larger map was to move labels around to be able to fit the stuff around it and then be able to add um, uh, context boxes to show where the zoomed in areas are. All right, thank you. Kathy, I just say, like, if those umbrellas are on the ground, put them in OSM. We map what's on the... Oh, they move. Oh, okay. All right. Valid. 